The Rift Breaker is a strange mashup of RTS, Slasher, Base Builder, and Tower Defense. Did you think you needed this in your life? Watch on and find out. My name is Thorax, and this is Strategy for Busy People. If you've got a few minutes, I'll tell you what to play. The Rift Breaker by Exor Studios is an interesting mashup of things. I've got about 14 hours in figuring it out. It's pretty common for games these days to cross several genres. Sometimes it comes off as unique, and other times it comes off as, well, a strange mashup of several genres. In The Rift Breaker, you are piloting a combat-slash-science mech, presumably in the future, and your mission is to explore this new planet to try to make it habitable for humanity or something. I don't know. This part of the plot is boring and mostly played out, but it at least sets up the game. After your initial training run tutorial that familiarizes you with some of the building and fighting aspects of the game, you suit up. That's figurative, because it seems like you're not actually inside the mech. But maybe you are. I don't know that either, and at least on easy mode, it doesn't matter. So, you travel through this rift and land on this hostile alien planet and have to start setting up your base. As you set up your base, you have to defend it from incoming alien hordes. Why is it that when humanity visits a new planet, we always end up going to war with the local wildlife? But hey, at least the hordes are kind of cool. You start out with a basic grasp of a couple of resources to extract, and a very limited set of buildings you can construct. You quickly build up enough of a base to start downloading some technology from Earth and researching other technology. It makes no sense that somehow you couldn't have brought the database of Earth tech with you and you have to download it slowly over some rifter net connection, but okay, ignore that man behind the curtain too. The management of resource extraction and power for your base feels very Starcraftian to me. The towers that defend your base have a cap related to how many AI core buildings you build, which if you've played Starcraft, smells a lot like building houses to support your units. But you only ever really have one unit, your mech. But look at all those sweet towers. Anyway, the fundamental game loop is that you smash aliens and destroy the biome of this planet, learn stuff about it, and figure out how to extract other materials from the planet, which then helps you smash the aliens and destroy the biome better, all in the hopes of constructing a super rift to bring humanity or something to this planet. Makes enough sense to keep you occupied. But it starts to fall apart relatively quickly for me. There is this supremely complicated tech tree with all this wild stuff on it. Like most tech trees, earlier stuff helps unlock later stuff. Some later stuff requires that you level up your headquarters, and doing so unleashes a huge alien horde attack, because I guess that particular aspect of construction is too annoying for the Alien Homeowner Association to ignore. But how do you know what mechanisms of destruction to build? Well, that's part of my complaint. But hold on. There are also two other tech trees in this game. One for your mech weapons, buffs, and attachments, and another for quote-unquote alien research. Annoyingly, the alien research tech tree is littered with stuff that could be weapons, buildings, both, neither, or whatever. So that's super annoying too. Learning about the aliens uses this bioscanner thing, but you can't scan everything. So, in a horde of aliens, you might only have one or two that you can scan. Trying to scan while not dying and hitting the alien with the scanner is an exercise in frustration. You can get a deployable scanning turret, but then you have to keep the aliens occupied long enough for the turret to get the scans done, and oftentimes the aliens will take out the turret before meaningful scanning takes place. This whole thing kind of sucks. Okay, so you're researching and downloading buildings and killing aliens and all is well and good, but it's not enough. To progress in the campaign, you have to visit other locations on the planet and set up bases there. These visits usually come with mission objectives like annoyingly scanning certain items or annoyingly collecting other items. 
Like, okay, I have to use a different type of personal geoscanner to find titanium in sufficient quantity so that I can then mysteriously tune the global geoscanner to find titanium, but the first place you find titanium is so inhospitable that there's no point in setting up a permanent base there? Ah, uh, sure, fine, whatever. You do end up setting up several long-term bases in other locations, and more often than not, you end up building a lot of mini-outposts around key resource deposits in these different map areas, occasionally fending off large incoming hordes of creatures. Remember how I rhetorically asked about figuring out which mechanisms of destructions to build? Well, scanning creatures helps you understand what vulnerabilities the creatures have, like being vulnerable to fire, resistant to explosives, and so on but you don't clearly know which creatures live in which biome or which creatures are likely to attack until you get attacked by them. So planning for your base's defense is a bit of either a crapshoot or wild overbuilding. I mostly just built a combination of flame towers, mortars, and sentinels, which cover several types of damage, and I did so with reckless abandon. This pretty much managed to work all the time, but it was kind of grating and not particularly fun. In fact, the mission objectives all started to look like different flavors of the same dish, and the endless treadmill of just slightly better weapons slash building slash technology to keep going was getting a little tiring. There are a whole bunch of other game systems that I didn't even touch on. The mods that you can discover for your towers and mech weapons, the different types of power generation, and the fact that advanced weapons have complex inputs. There really is a lot here. Oh, and the other suspension of disbelief thing, in a big way, is that magically, when you are not in a particular base, your other bases continue to happily produce and ravage the environment, but never get attacked. Weird. It's almost like you are the cause of and solution to all of your problems. Huh. Before I give my final verdict, take a moment to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to share it with your friends. Agree with me? Disagree with me? Or want to see other content? Let me know in the comments below. Want to try this game yourself? Check out my humble affiliate link below. And if you want to support me in making more of these videos, become a patron on Patreon. Your support really makes a difference. The Final Verdict <laughs> The game is gorgeous, the sounds are great, and look at how much alien horde smashing there is. If you want a little bit of a mindless romp through the alien biomes with a relatively never-ending plow-through of technology treadmill and somewhat predictable mission objectives, this game may definitely float your boat. But you really gotta suspend disbelief and deal with a lot of same-same to keep things moving along. There is also a survival mode with no real objectives other than not dying, and XOR is actively doing a beta for co-op play, which would probably make the game much more entertaining. Who doesn't want to smash aliens with friends? On my trademarked three-point score scale of avoid, meh, and I forgot to eat, on playtime alone, you would think that this game would score awesome, but I think I'm going to give it a meh because I got too bored to really stick it out until the finish. Look, I enjoy tasty fried alien scorpion meat just as much as the next guy, but when it's the same tasty fried alien scorpion meal for the hundredth time, the novelty of alien scorpion starts to wear off. Think we can raise cattle here? <laughs>